Best mansion you've ever stayed in? Best mansion I've ever stayed in. Have you ever stayed in another mansion? Uh, like all the places around here are named mansion. Like I stayed in the Trulia Mansion Hotel. Oh, that's right. I stayed in the Trulia Mansion Heritage Hotel. Good point. Up this morning, we're gonna go get some breakfast. So we're gonna go to Chao Rasta Market, just on the street here from our hotel. Get some breakfast. Then we're gonna go drive around Penang, see the rural side, hopefully find some Durian. Durian. What'd you order? I got two, two shark makeup. Finally. Holy cow. Alright, let's start quick cock once again. Try this one, see you know how I feel again. This one looks right. It does. Steven has the, what's it called again? Wakke. Wakke. My new favorite word in the trip, wakke. All right, let's try it here. It does look right, it looks like it has the crunchies. Oh, it's good. White radish is such an underrated, slept on vegetable in American cooking. So versatile. But this is actual, wait, is this carrot cake though? No. Yeah. yeah. So the carrot cake's a little hard to make. You gotta like basically mush up the white, the white radish and then, I looked into it once, it's very hard to do, but it's very good. I'm very hungry, so I'm gonna go to eat now. Still working. But good? Georgetown, drove over the mountain, got to the other side of Penang, just to see the mural festival. There's the International Container Mural Festival. As you can see, there is a very nice mural, but there is no festival. In fact, I think there's two murals, but I haven't walked around to the other side yet. Let's go see. Oh, it even says it on the sign. Apparently there are more murals. Okay, well, we're gonna go find them, right? Corn, <laughs> a little corn on top of that guy's head. <laughs> 
This is so random and weird, which to me just makes it feel very Malaysian. There has to be a story. Apparently there's other murals around this area, but we're in the middle of a rice field, as you can see. It is beautiful. It's beautiful on the side of that. We've never been over here, so. After the excitement of the Penang Container Art Container Mural Festival, we need to relax. So we're gonna go to Long Beach. We didn't bring our swimsuits, but we just wanna go see it, so let's go. It's not that long. which is that durian to me is like wine. I like it all and I can't tell the difference between a good one and a bad one. Okay. Yeah, I think it's true. Yeah. What, what, it's what variety did they say this the was? The yellow kind. The yellow kind. <laughs> the yeah. yellow flesh kind. Yeah. Which partly goes to my theory that a lot of reasons that like Westerners don't like durian, which I don't get, I love durian, we both love durian is that they just get the worst kinds and people sell the worst kinds. You know, there's an element that they're trying to give us like, well to be fair, they try to top sauce in the Musang King, like when they just gave us the bad kind. It smells delicious. Mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, it tastes so wonderful. I love their eating. All right, go ahead. If I'm eating two types, I can tell the difference then. I just can't tell the difference like, eating one and then another day I eat another one, and I can't tell, really tell the difference. Yeah. I just know I like it all and it's all good to me. Yeah, we were with our friend Zuzu, we had D24 or something like that. that in my memory tastes the same as this. So like if we're not having them consecutively, they all kind of taste the same for me. I don't mean to disrespect or bad, we love their yeah. Listen, if you're a Westerner watching this, you're a Matsala. Jika kamu datang ke Malaysia, kamu mesti cuba durian. Kamu mesti. 
como uh, yo necesito, tú necesitas try durian. I don't know try in Spanish. No, my question is, would you travel halfway around the world for durian? Yes, 100%, no question. You can't get it anywhere else, you can't get it fresh. I would definitely hop on a plane for like 18 hours and get durian. Which my family has all tried durian and hate it. I think that's crazy, but it's so good. Says there's parking available on the ground. Into this year. They, they don't have to be goals, they don't have to be numbers. But like, do you notice? Yeah, it is a half museum, half hotel. This is the first time I've ever seen a museum. Yeah, because while we will not be able to do it, we can take a self guided audio tour of the museum, ah. which is something I bet you've never done. No, you're right. In a hotel before. No, look, we can just pull a tight bar. Yeah. How fancy. So about this us. is a very, very like heritage houses, this is the heritage house. Like, wow, so, yeah. this is so exciting! So yeah, this is the, the Blue Mansion, right? Yes! <laughs> I don't know how to say it in Chinese, but yeah, again, you can take a self-guided audio tour right on our phone. So, what are you saying? Each room at the Blue Mansion carries a name rather than a number, and with each name, a meaningful story to the mansion. Here in the Tai Fu room, it all began in Tai Fu or Dabu in the Guangdong province of China. Here, Shon Fat Zi was born to a family of farmers and school teachers in 1840. As the Chinese Civil War raged on, it is safe to assume that the family power grew poorer, and by 1856, at the age of 16, Shon struck out toward Southeast Asia in search of better fortunes. He found his fortunes and went on to become one of the most successful entrepreneurs, philanthropists, and visionaries of his time, but he never forgot his hometown and worked tirelessly on national development in the Qing Dynasty. He was also a master of Minister of Agriculture, Industries, Road, and Mines for the Guangdong and Fujian provinces. Chong, Chong's family journey, or Chong's journey, went full circle as he was eventually interred at his very sizable home in Taipu. And the governor of the, and the governor of the province applied for a specially commissioned post posthumous biography to be included in Beijing's Department of Natural History. Okay, I haven't done this too much on this trip, but I feel a need now to include a little room tour because we're actually going to take a tour of our hotel later because it's also a mansion. It is the Blue Mansion in Penang, also known as the Xiong Fat Zi House. That was the guy who owned it. Came from peasant farmers. It's beautiful room, the Taupu room, named after his hometown, opens out onto a beautiful courtyard, you know, Crazy Rich Asian style, that happened here, they filmed that movie here, part of it at least, you know, the big scene at the end where she gives up the piece in Mahjong so the mom can win, but really she won because she showed the mom, she had her son's best interest at heart, boom, spoiler alert, but anyway, a beautiful little room with all these original, supposedly original or old, very old uh, pieces, so yeah. Well, I'll show you the whole, the whole hotel now, okay? Let's take a hotel tour. I just found out that this place is winner of Most Excellent Project for the UNESCO Heritage Conservation Awards 2000, one of the 10 greatest mansions in the world, Lonely Planet 2011, and of course, film location for Crazy Rich Asians and Academy Award winning Indochine in 1995. On our way out to find some more food in Penang. Not Shark Bay Cock, not Shark, not Quake Cock. We don't need Quake Cock. We got it three nights in a row. It's wonderful. We found the best one we like. Let's go with that. But let's show you this wonderful hotel we're staying in, one of the best 10 mansions in the world. So, yeah, if you go upstairs, 
you know, there's a museum up there, and then this is the restaurant here. That's definitely where they filmed it. It's the same decorations on the wall. It's the same pictures and the three plates. So again, I've never stayed in a hotel. Okay, we have stayed in hotels that have gift shops. I've never stayed in a hotel that has tours, self-guided and with someone. And I've never stayed in a hotel that has a museum about the hotel. Quite interesting, quite different. It is a beautiful hotel, as you can see behind me. Obviously, you see why it's called the Blue Mansion. myself I was here last night back in the I think it's the backpacker area of Penang Love Lane I see bars of tables bars filled with European men drinking lots of beer and there's sports on TV and there's holy guacamole and there's ads for 1664 which frankly I don't know who drinks that people who hate themselves drink 1664 okay for people who just want to punish themselves for drinking because they know it's wrong and they feel like if they drink a crappy beer, they'll drink less. Anywho, the holy guacamole, there's a pizza place. But we're gonna try to find, there's apparently a little cart at the end, Mama, Mother and Sons, I think it's called. Get some pork and me. Get some haka noodles, right? Me haka. We like that stuff. Let's go. No, no, it's like see. It's because of you, yesterday he didn't talk to me at all. I finally found it, no thanks to Iris. Iris is not gonna take the bait and turn around. We found it, we're trying to find it on like Google picture, it's very old, but Iris found it. Maybe the more confused ones earlier from my part. Char, what? You're right, thank you. Oh, thank you. That was good. That place was very popular. It was very, very good. Irish is right, though. Irish brought up the, the lard is what makes a difference. Not a lot of places in KL where you get that will have those little crispy bits, like the pork lard. And that's what makes it. Some nice local guy sat down and ate with us at our table. It was very crowded. He agrees. So we're on to something. Also, not picture, we got some sete, because we got sete uh, babi pork sete. You do not see that a lot because pork is. Takalal, right? So if you want Malays to eat in your dish, eat in your restaurant, you gotta have all food. But Penang is very, it's a very Chinese city, I feel like, or at least lots of large parts of it are. So it's known for its hakka food, and pork is definitely part of that. So pork satay was fucking amazing. Would I fly half around the world for pork satay? I might. Would I fly half around the world for that wonton me? Uh, I might. I don't know. The pork lord. I would fly halfway around the world for the concept of uh, good wonton meat. Because wonton meat in America won't taste like that one. All right, we've checked out of our fabulous room, the Blue Mansion. Now we're going back to being tourists. We're gonna to take a tour of it. There's a bunch of tours. Again, I've never been in a hotel where they go for tours of it, so this should be fun. Let's go see it. As you can see, I'll see lots of people here take the tour. Energy spark. Feel the energy. <laughs> like charge out like a battery. Yeah? <laughs> you can run very fast. Huh? You have 80? Keep that. 80 is here. We call it in here. Yes. 
Good. Hold up. You have to close your eyes. Breathe in. Breathe out. Breathe in. Breathe out. Breathe in. Breathe out. Step in. The temperature drops. Stop in. Leave us a company. Duck with my company. It's almost like a national wide of Chinese today. Yeah? I look at this bag, one side, but now it's no more. Mm -hmm. Alright, let's go to the end.